Okay, so we have, we know the characteristics, we are able to graph it. If it wasn't in standard form, we can move it to standard form. We recognize what word problems are, but what happens if they just tell me the characteristics? What if I give you the vertex or I give you the axis of symmetry, et cetera, et cetera? I see it as solving a puzzle, working it backwards. So that's exactly what, how we're going to do this. This is a little bit of a longer section, so be prepared for more than one example in this particular video. So if I know this information, Information. Well, what's the important information? They told me that we have a parabola with focus 2, 1 and a vertex with uh, at negative 5, 1. Well, shouldn't we pause and figure out what are we looking at? Are we looking at the vertical? Are we looking at the horizontal? Is there anything I can see? So I kind of look for repeated values or any patterns. So what did they give me? They told me it's a parabola. That's nice because then I don't have to figure out what conic it is. They told me my focus and my vertex. So if I'm looking at my focus and my vertex, I notice that I have a repeating value of one in the Y spot. So where does my repeated value show up? When the orientation is horizontal. Again, proof, because if this is one and K is one here, then this can't be one unless P is zero and P can't be zero because that would zero out the entire right hand side and that's not how a parabola works. So we know it's horizontal. Let's go ahead and fill in what we know. We know this information. So now you got to do a little bit of logical sequencing, problem solving, critical thinking, and kind of fill out the rest based off of what you know. Again, I say this is like cracking a puzzle. This is my favorite part of conics is, you know, if you're given just little bits, how do you get it back to that original formula? So uh, we immediately know what our H and our K is. And if we know H and we know K, we can go ahead and solve for P. So we started with the easiest type of question. So this is nice and easy. Okay, so I've solved for H. I've, I'm sorry, I know H and K, so I've solved for P right here. Now let's fill out everything we know. If we know H, K, and P, then we can fill out the original formula. We can also fill out our axis of symmetry and we can solve and fill out our directrix. Ta-da, we are ready to graph this question. So like I said, this was the easiest one, just kind of a slow intro into technically what could be the hardest for some of us, but I, like I said, just see it as cracking a puzzle, breaking a code. So I plot my points. Uh-oh, I used a color that's not so visible, so I'll color over it if you need me to. So here was my vertex. Here is my focus. So A, more proof, we are horizontal, and because the focus is to the right, then that means I'm opening to the right. Another proof that our p-value was positive, so we're good there. All right, there is my axis of symmetry going through this point and proof that again, I'm moving in the right direction. My directrix is on the other side. Oh, I don't even know what I just saw. That was great. So we plot it, we check it in a graphing calculator and let's move on to a new example. Now we've got one a little bit harder. They gave us the vertex, great, so we have H and K, but they only gave us the directrix. So we might have to do a more code breaking, puzzle cracking to solve this question. So first and foremost, I know it's a parabola. That's awesome. I don't have to figure out what conic it is. I know my vertex, but now I've got to look at the directrix. What is the variable we've associated? Y, that should make it nice and easy because there's only one directrix with a Y and it is the vertical side. So that helps us out. And it helps us recognize, I don't know why I highlighted the three, but it helps us recognize which side we're on or on the vertical side. So let's plug in what we know. We know our vertex and we know our directrix. So that means we know some values. Can we solve for P? In fact, we can using the directrix. Uh, since directrix is equal to K minus P and I know my K, I can solve for it. So I go ahead and plug that in. Plug in what we know, we know negative one. Plug in what we know, we know negative two, and we solve for our p-value. Our p-value is negative, so this means since we're vertical, we're probably facing down. We'll, we'll test that when we see what direction our focus is and what direction our, our directrix is in. So we plug in what we know. We keep on solving, keep on solving until we have all of our characteristics accounted for. Go to the graph, and I'm gonna color this in in just a second. Okay, so here is our vertex. Here's our focus. 
this is our axis of symmetry and here is our act our directrix so you can see if this is the vertex and this is the focus we are going down and that's what we predicted because our p-value is negative and since our directrix is the other direction we know that this is probably what our graph may look like Ta-da! let's test it in desmos and we are pretty decently on point you know if I had been a little skinnier or a little wider, I'll tell you, don't stress on an FRQ. I wouldn't be um, testing that you 100% knew how skinny or wide it was because that would be an expectation to create a table. If I provided a table, however, should you fill it out or should you use it to make your plot points very nice and neat? All right, my final example, uh, we are not given the vertex. We are given the focus. We're told which direction it opens. Uh, and we are also told a coordinate point that belongs on the graph. And that's all the information they gave us. Awesome. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Because it opens up, I automatically know it's vertical and the p-value must be positive. So that is great. We can go ahead and start with that information. And we're going to go ahead and use the vertical information and plug in what we know. Unfortunately, we only know one real value. We know it contains 37 and we know our p-value is positive. So now we got to do some sequencing to figure this out. So if we know that h is equal to negative 1 and our, uh, k, our focus value is k plus p, k plus p must be 7. So that means our k value can either be 7 minus p or our p value can either be 7 minus k. I'm not ready to solve for p or k, but I do know that I've got enough information that if I calculate something else, I can grab this formula and solve for one of those. We also know that p must be positive. So 7 minus k, k better be less than 7, right? That's, you know, kind of an assumption there as well. Since we know these points are on the graph, we can plug these in to help us solve for p and k. So this is uh, this uh, our original formula right here. If I plugged in these values for x and for y, it must be a true value, right? It must be equivalent statements on the left and the right because we know it must contain it. And how is that going to help us? Well, we know our h value. Great. So we know x, we know h, and we know a y value. We don't know k and we don't know p, so we have a two-variable uh, formula there. But since we have formulas relating them, we get to decide which variable to solve for, and we get to plug it in that way. So let's actually see what that looks like. I've decided to solve for p. We could have solved for k. Peanut butter and jelly tells me that's totally okay. But to make my life easier, I went ahead and solved for p. Again, what did I do? In, I, I plugged, plugged in everything we already knew. Then I left p as p, but I converted k to its formula that I solved for in the previous slide. Now go ahead and distribute out, do what we need to, combine those sevens, and now we've got simply p squared. Hey, this is so much easier to solve. Divide by my uh, four, get my p by itself, and now I end up with plus or minus two. Ugh, but plus or minus, our p-value shouldn't have two values, it should only have one. Hold the phone. They told us it opened up, so it must be positive. So the only value we have is P equals 2. So if I know P equals 2, I can go back and solve for K. You could have plugged it back into this formula, but why not simply plug it in here to solve for K? So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I plug it in, and I recognize that K is 5. Let's just triple check some stuff that we know. Since it's opened, opening up, should P be positive? Yes, and our P value is positive. Since we knew that P was, or K was equal to, sorry, P was equal to uh, 7 minus K, and P must be positive, then K must be less than 7, and K is 5, which is less than 7. So again, cracking that puzzle, breaking it back, we're just checking our characteristics makes sense. Since we have all three values, we can plug in the rest of our formula, and we can go ahead and solve our graph. So let's plug that in. There's our vertex, there's our focus, axis of symmetry, and our directrix. So now I get to color those in for you. Vertex, focus, directrix, axis of symmetry. Proof, proof, proof. We know exactly what we're doing. We draw it, and we are good to go.
Should I confirm with a calculator? Since I'm learning, absolutely. And as you can see, mine is a lot skinnier than theirs was. So the only way for mine to be perfect would have been to create a table or, you know, if I have a graphing calculator, great, then I got it perfect. But it is now your turn to try.